Thank you so much, Anne, and thank you for coming. It's a great pleasure to come here and talk about this uh, issue of antibiotics, and especially the politics of antibiotics, which is, is interesting for me as a political scientist. My name is Bjorn Rönnestrand. I'm a PhD in, in political science. I currently work at something called the SOM Institute. I think perhaps some of you have heard about it. It's a survey organization where we study uh, public opinion and development in society, which is, is uh, situated at the social science faculty at the University of Gothenburg. So it's great to be here uh, to talk about regulated and voluntary collective action to fight antibiotic resistance. Uh, I'm the last, second to last, uh, presenter at this course, so I know you learned a lot uh, already and also learned some things about the issue I'm going to talk about more specifically today, which is antibiotic resistance as a collective action dilemma. I think that was something that was touched upon by Christian Munte as well as Fredrik Karlsson earlier. So. I will try to build on that, on that argument, and go on and think about things to solve this dilemma. So uh, I will talk about uh, attempts to regulate the collective action dilemma, um, and also attempts to govern this dilemma by means of voluntary collective action. So we're going to and talk about that and I've split my, uh, split my presentation into four parts. Uh, basically the first uh, short introduction to this issue to remind you about this argument of AMR being a collective action dilemma and then the second part I'll go into and, and discuss how you can regulate uh, and more into the problem of regulating this issue of antibiotic resistance and then turn over to is it possible to govern this collective action dilemma with the voluntary uh, collective action and then trying to wrap up at the end with some uh, final points. So I think uh, 45 minutes will be perfect for this and then you'll have some break and then Anne will continue. So just want to remind you about this argument that I think Christian introduced to you about this being what we call in political science or economics or philosophy a collective action dilemma, uh, namely that there is a conflict basically between the individual interest and the longer collective interest when it comes to using antibiotics. As explained in this uh, article, uh, the authors say that there is little incentives for patients or healthcare providers to consider the effect of their decision to use antibiotics on overall levels of resistance. Basically, when you go to the doctor and think about treating some infections with antibiotics, there is very little incentive for you to think, okay, I shouldn't take these antibiotics because uh, I know there is a long-term problem of antibiotic resistance. So uh, also here explained uh, a little bit in the voice of uh, the political science literature talking about this as the logic of collective action, simply that people ignore these collective threats and will uh, prioritize their individual short-term benefits. So the argument here is according to the logic of collective action, individual short-term interest in antibiotic treatment will triumph over the long-term collective objective of an overall reduction. As you may know, of course, there is, uh, this is not a clear-cut example, as has, I guess, been pre presented for you. There is also, to some extent, short-term incentives of, not, of avoiding antibiotics, if it's possible. But uh, generally, we see this problem. People actually behave as this were the case of logic that is determining people's, uh, people's behavior. So, so we have uh, a dilemma here, uh, and this is uh, pretty much the center of attention for many of uh, my colleagues in the political science department who study collective action in other types of problems. This is very similar to the dilemmas of climate change, for example. We see the same problem, of course, of people ignoring basically the long-term and collective threats uh, of climate change just to promote self-interest in the short term. So, so uh, we see this type of problem, I guess, uh, in all social circumstances uh, in society to some extent. Uh, but as I said, we have to think about a way of doing something to combat this uh, antibiotic resistance problem and to, to, to create cooperation for the common good. 
Uh, and I think that you can, uh, if you want to uh, uh, make a simplification, you can divide between different type of uh, attempts to do this, basically. You can use regulations and try to force people to do uh, good things for the collective, but you can also sometimes, uh, to some extent, think that people could, could do this voluntarily without these regulations.